Well hello everybody and welcome to Jeff's Baking Blog. Now today I'm going to uh, make a Czech Easter bread. Uh, it's called Mazanets and this is I'm making it uh, at this point uh, which is sort of a couple of months before Easter, February, March, yes, a couple of months before Easter, um, just so that people who might want to make it can actually see the video uh, in time and then get the ingredients together. So this is a, uh, it's called Mazanets and it's, they eat it in Czech, uh, Czech Republic and in Slovakia and in fact uh, variations on the same thing throughout the whole of Eastern Europe really. And for that uh, we have raisins and almonds and I have soaked my raisins in some dark rum uh, before I've started so I had 60 grams of raisins which I've soaked in dark rum and then discarded the rum and drained the raisins um, and then I have almonds as well so uh, for the ingredients I have uh, 525 grams of uh, bread flour that's actually four cups plus three tablespoons I have 200 milliliters of milk I've got 100 milliliters here and another 100 milliliters in a jug I have my 60 grams of raisins, which is um, uh, a scant half cup. I have 50 grams of uh, sliced or shaved almonds or flaked almonds. That's uh, about a third of a cup. I have uh, 125 grams of melted butter, which is cooling down. Um, and that is one stick plus uh, one tablespoon. I have the yolks from three medium eggs that would be large in the USA I have one teaspoon or oh, I say one teaspoon I have the the zest of one lemon uh, half a teaspoon of salt I have the seeds from one vanilla pod now if you don't have a vanilla pod you could use a tablespoon of uh, vanilla extract I have one cup sorry I have 100 grams which is half a cup of caster sugar and I have 14 milliliters of uh, dried active yeast which is uh, two packets of yeast of dried active yeast and I'm actually going to put a little bit of the sugar into half of the milk that's 100 grams and I'm also going to put about three tablespoons of flour in there and I'm going to put the dried yeast and then I'm going to stir it all together and this is going to activate the yeast for us and I'm actually going to leave this for between 10 and 20 minutes I want it to be nice and frothy uh, before we go on to the next step So we'll just leave that to activate and then I will come back and we'll go on to the next step. Okay so our yeast uh, and milk and flour sugar mixture has activated nicely, it's nice and frothy. So we'll go on to make the dough and for that I'm going to put our flour into the bowl of the stand mixer and I'm going to add into that the sugar and the salt and the lemon zest and the uh, bean seed, the vanilla bean seeds. Now if you were using vanilla extract I would put that in with the, the eggs, I wouldn't add it in at this stage. And what I'm going to do is just stir that all around just to get them combined a little bit. Like that. And then I'm going to add in our melted butter. And I'm scraped down the the dish to make sure I get it all in there and 
and the remain, remainder of our uh, 200 millilitres of milk, I should have said 200 millilitres is um, half a cup of milk and then a third of a cup of milk as well. And then I'm going to add in the egg yolks and our activated yeast mixture. And I'm going to beat that with my dough hook attachment, starting slowly to get the mixture all combined. And then I'll increase to a medium speed and, beat and, and knead it like that for 10 minutes, um, adding the uh, shaved almonds and the raisins as we go. And with the dough mixing like that, I'm actually going to just push it down and I'm going to put in my raisins and the shaved almonds. I should say that I will need more shaved almonds to go on top later, but I'll tell you about that later. And I'm just going to continue to knead that for 10 minutes until we have a nice sticky dough. Slightly sticky, I should say. Okay, so I think I've kneaded that for long enough and it's just, it's tacky, it's not too sticky. It's just tacky to the touch. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that out onto my work surface. But I'm going to put some flour on the work surface first of all. And then pull our dough out. So I'll just knead it a little bit to make sure that we get the raisins reasonably well spread throughout the dough and it looks quite good so then what I'll do is I'm just going to form that into a a ball of a sort like that and I'm going to put that into a bowl which I have greased and I'm going to put it with the top side down first of all and then I'm just going to turn it over run it around because I want the whole of the the dough coated with the oil and the reason for that is that I'm trying to stop the dough from forming a skin as it rises so with the dough like that, I'm going to cover that with a damp tea towel and I'm going to leave it to rise until it's doubled in size. Now in my kitchen, which is not particularly warm, that's going to take uh, at least an hour and probably up to two hours. And then I will come back and we'll go on to the next stage. Right, so it's been about an hour and 45 minutes and uh, my dough has uh, doubled in size quite nicely. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lightly flour the work surface again and tip the dough out onto it. Then I'm going to just knock it back. 
like that and I'm going to give it a few little needs tucking it under like that and this is going to be quite a large loaf now what you could do um, is you could divide it in two and make two smaller loaves I have seen some where people have made one small loaf and then with the other half they've divided that into three and created three uh, long sausages which they can then braid and turn into a, a, a sort of braided ring but I'm just going to make one large one so I'm going to put that onto my baking sheet and I'm uh, going to cover it and let it prove again for at least another 30 minutes. Then I'm going to come back and we'll brush it with egg wash and put some almonds on. So I put this onto the baking tray. Like that. And I'll cover that and I will come back in 30 minutes and uh, we'll go on and brush it with egg and uh, while that's happening I'm going to preheat my oven to 180 celsius that's 160 celsius with a fan 350 fahrenheit okay so our oven is now preheated to 180 celsius 160 celsius with a fan 350 fahrenheit and our dough has uh, risen just a little bit after uh, we uh, knocked it back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut across into the top like that, maybe a little bit bigger and cut it here as well just like that and then I'm going to brush all over this with an egg wash just like that and then I'm going to sprinkle some uh, shaved or slivered or flaked almonds over it as well I'm going to bake it in the oven for between 60 and 80 minutes. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to test it after 60 minutes with a skewer to see if it comes out clean. Okay, so with that covered roughly with almond flakes, I'm going to bake that in the oven for between one hour and 80 minutes, one hour, 20 minutes. And I'll test it with a skewer after an hour to see if it comes out clean. And if it does, that means it is done. If it doesn't, I will bake it longer. I will also test it with my thermometer um, just to check that it reaches the right internal temperature, uh, which should indicate whether it's done or not. Um, and that would be uh, between 88 Celsius and 96 Celsius that's 190 Fahrenheit uh, to um, 205 206 uh, Fahrenheit and if the internal temperature has reached that it should mean that it's cooked as well so uh, that's what I'm going to do now if it browns too much looks as though it's browning too much as it's baking I would simply put some uh, aluminium foil over the top to stop it from browning anymore. So in the oven it goes and I'll be back with you when I've taken it out of the oven and let it cool down completely. Okay I'm back with you and our uh, Mazinets bread baked for, I actually baked mine for 60 minutes and um, when I tested it, it the skewer came out clean the temperature was right but it was a bit soft underneath so I left it in for a further 20 minutes or 15 minutes in fact 
um, and to just to make sure that it was completely cooked through and it did split which is I thought it may do um, but that's fine so this is what it looks like and I've, I've cut it into a wedge shape because it's rather a large loaf as you can see and I'm just going to put a little bit of butter on um, and have a taste Mm. It is very nice. I can taste a little bit of the lemon from the zest. And then I've got sultanas and almonds. And just a bit of sweetness. There's only 100 grams of sugar. Um, so that's ideal. Hmm. It is very, very good. So as I say, this is eaten um, at Easter time. I think traditionally they tend to bake it on the Saturday before Easter Sunday. And then I have it on Easter Sunday and then during the week. Um, but from my uh, perspective, you can bake it any time coming up to Easter. So that's going to be it for this recipe. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, please give me the thumbs up below the video and click to subscribe to my YouTube channel. In the top right hand corner of the screen there will be an eye that you can click on which will take you to this recipe and I'll also put a link for it below the video. And then I will be back with you with another recipe in the very near future. So until then, happy baking.